Allison Asher of Coldwell Banker Realty is a top producing realtor in Kankakee County. With over 600 homes sold since 2013, she's definitely your go to realtor. Whether you're looking to buy a home or maybe as a first time home buyer or looking to sell your home, Allison will bring her expertise to help you get the job done. Allison focuses on clear communication, organization, and digital marketing, which is going to help you meet your home buying and selling goals. As you know, the real estate market is really challenging right now. So contact Allison today at allisonasherhomes.com or facebook.com forward slash Allison Asher Homes, and she'll be happy to help you navigate through the buying and selling process. Noble Dairy Queen has been serving the Kankakee community for over 80 years now. And generations of Kankakeeans have actually got their start serving delicious treats. So whether you're looking for a flexible first job, a mid-level management position, or a career, the Noble Dairy Queen stores are hiring at all of their locations. So come serve some smiles to your neighbors. Applications are available in person or at noblestores.com. Taking care of our physical health is surely an important thing. I know I'm constantly trying to eat the right foods, even though it's super hard to do, exercise regularly, and all that good stuff. However, if we're finding that we can't seem to take care of ourselves physically, maybe it's because our mental health needs some attention first. You know, after all, if our minds aren't healthy, how can we expect that same mind to want to eat a balanced diet or go for a walk outside. There's no shame at all in admitting that we may be struggling mentally because there are people surrounding us that understand where we're coming from and want to help. Just like True Heights Treatment, they're one of the leading providers of mental health counseling and DUI evaluation, both in person and virtually. True Heights Treatment was founded by Olivet Nazarene University alumnus George Brassy. Now, to learn more, go to TrueHeightsTX.com. That's TrueHeightsTX.com or call the office at 708 248 7039. Our mental health is just as important, if not more important, than our physical health. And True Heights Treatment is there to help. TrueHeightsTX.com. That's TrueHeightsTX.com. If you pledge $20 or more per month in the Kankakee Podcast Patron Program, you get to read aloud a short message on an episode of Kankakee Podcast. So here's one of those messages now. What's up? This is background musician Jake Vaughn, and you're listening to the Kinky Key Podcast. What are we going to talk about today? We might talk about local events. We might talk about charity work. We might talk about anything that goes on in Kinky Key. So stay tuned and stay groovy. To become a Kinky Key Podcast patron, go to kankakeepodcast.com. Every little bit helps. Thanks for your support. Thankful for the way these stories hold on To the lifetime we won't get back, I know These rivers carry Hello and welcome to Kankakee Podcast, where we talk about the people and places of Kankakee County. I'm Jake Lamore, and this is our monthly episode where we sit down with some of the staff of the Kankakee County Museum, and we learn about 
our county's a piece of our county's history because like any other area uh, of history, there's many different pieces to it. Um, and with March being uh, Women's History Month, it gives us a uh, and any time is a good excuse to learn about prominent women in our county, whether it's past or present. Um, So uh, let's uh, please welcome Jory Walters and uh, Jack Clacy back to Kankakee Podcast. Welcome to you uh, both. Thank you. It's been a a little while. It has been, yeah. (laughs) Um, It it feels like yesterday, but it's, I I last saw, we last saw you, Jack, back in November, I think. I think it was, yes. I think it was November, and then, Jory, it's been even longer since Mm -hmm. you and I have Mm -hmm. sat down. And then, this is the first time we've actually had both of you Mm -hmm. together, um, which is super exciting, because I feel like the two of you are the, like, the heartbeat of the museum as far as obviously Jory you're the research mm-hmm. coordinator um and and Jack you also uh are extremely gifted when it comes to research um and just overall knowledge of the county so having both of you mm-hmm. in the same room right now is just I feel like we could conquer the world when it comes to, or conquer conquer the county okay. when it comes to yes. when it comes to, to Let's history. Start the county and work our way. Down yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to take uh, more than we can we can handle. But uh, but yeah, so thank you to both of you so much for being here today. Let's get to uh, National Women's History Month, specifically talking about some prominent women in Kankakee County's history. Where do we where do we start on this? Who do we start with? Well, I think we start with Jory, perhaps. Yes. She has uh, the first one up. We have okay. three all together. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's begin with Fanny Still. Fanny Still has uh, a huge connection to the museum, Kankakee County Museum Historical Society. And she was the first, very first curator when our um, museum was created and was built at the end of 1949. Uh, yeah, 48, 49. 48, 49. She was the curator. Well, she had a history with the small family prior to that. She worked for the small family, and we'll talk about that as well. But when she was curator, she did all kinds of amazing things with the history of the county, with the school children. Uh, of the county, she really wanted uh, to to have the school children all over to learn the history of the county and different sites. Uh, she would take kids on school bus rides and see different landmarks, and she really wanted to engulf children and the general public with um, all kinds of history from the county. Now, originally, she was not from here. She was from Aurora, Illinois. Uh, she made her way out west to believe, the Seattle area. She got a degree in nursing, but ended up um, hooking up with a small family. Uh, some of the family had moved out to the west, to the Seattle area, and she ended up being a nurse for one of the children uh, when the Smalls were out there. And eventually the Smalls, you know, made their way back here. Where they lived and she, she stayed with the family and worked with them in many different capacities. Did she um, end up working for, like, Dr. Small? Like Mostly for Len Small, I believe. Mostly for, for Len. Len. Yep. Okay. And and actually, his, she was uh, the... Secretary for the small farming operations. Oh, right. Uh, Len Small and his son Bud uh, operated a, a big farming operation. There. What, Jerry, I think what they had dairy cattle, they had uh, uh, horses. Horses that, that they breeded. Um, rhubarb farm. Rhubarb farms. Mm-hmm. They were quite really a bit. Uh, entrenched. Now, Len Small was an agriculture person, his father was horticulture. So they both loved, you know, to grow things. So they had huge businesses. So she took care of the books, I believe, and and different things related to the family. We have some great pictures of her with uh, the children or grandchildren of of the small family. 
uh, but she was dedicated to the museum. Um, and she actually was here until her passing in 1970. So from 49 to 70, that was a long time uh, to be the curator. And she organized the museum and took in artifacts. And uh, this is when our museum was tiny. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, and it's always been where it has been, but it was a lot smaller, right? Yes. Correct? So when she was curator, she really did a great job of just organizing the museum. And she was also into many different other organizations. She was just uh, like a energizer. <laughs> energizer you know, bunny. person. Yeah. yeah, she just kept going. She did quite a many different things in the community, but she was best known as the history lady. One museum, and um, she conducted tours. Uh, I believe she did a lot with with the house uh, being um, part of the museum. Jack, did you ever meet Fanny? I worked with her for several years. Okay, uh, I was active in the museum or in the historical society in the museum. In fact, I was president of the historical mm -hmm. society at one point in early seventies, I think. But. Uh, when uh, I wrote the, I was co-authored the book of the people in '69 for the sesquicentennial. Uh, I was very involved with the historical society at that time, and so I, yeah, I uh, spent a couple of years knowing Fanny. She was a very interesting lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, had an iron will. <laughs> when she said it was going to happen, it was going to happen. <laughs> uh, also, the lovely thing from our standpoint, though, was. When somebody offered something for the museum, she never said no. She was the great collector, and a lot of our, you know, and that's really, a good that's a good and bad thing, mm -hmm. right? I, oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Um, Jory, did if you met her, you would have been fairly young. Uh, the, she, did you did you get the chance to meet her? No, actually, she died literally about. Seven days before I was born. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. knew like it was around yeah. that time, but I wasn't yeah. sure if like maybe as a kid you had. Oh, I would have loved yeah, yeah, and met her. I'm, yes. I'm sure. I'm sure. Absolutely. But, yeah. Um, Did she have anything to do with kind of like get uh, getting the smalls to donate that property, or w did the smalls just kind of willingly do that on their own? That is a good question. That's a good question. I since she know. since she was so you know uh -huh. obviously worked for the smalls and so close to it, mm -hmm. and she was very passionate mm -hmm. about history. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if she had like, hey, why don't you, you know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, as Jerry said, yeah, neither of us say we don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, someone from the small family would be able would to answer that, that yeah. question. I don't know yeah. if any of the current generation would even remember that. Yeah, you know, because uh, yeah. you know they're. That's that's a really Every right. Younger. That's yeah. a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Family but, was with them so long that she was really, I think, considered family. If I'm not, I Jory would know for sure. I believe she's actually buried in the small family plot, isn't she? At Mound Grove. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I have it here. <laughs> um, probably close to them. I would say. Yeah, it okay. would be because most likely. Because mm -hmm. she was she was with the family for what, more than fifty years, I think. Yeah, I was going to say years. that's uh, mm -hmm. to be buried in this the same <laughs> yeah. plot as they are. Is mm -hmm. she took this community where she didn't grow up, and she took it to heart. Yeah. And being a nursing in, in, in the, the nursing area, medical field, and then to go into history and be very proud of this area that she moved into with this family is just amazing. And she did uh, quite a great job of um, getting the, the community interested in its history. So Fanny, was that her, her pr primarily what she was known for is getting that museum built or what were some of her other accomplishments that she was known for oh my as far goodness. as, this history mm -hmm. goes to the county. Where was there yeah. anything in particular that sticks out, or was it just more of a a general? She was active in the community. In addition to history, there was she was quite a bit of. Uh, for example, she was uh, 
at one point president and an active member of the business and professional women of Kentucky. And that's kind of interesting mm -hmm. because in 1935, uh, the BPNW had a speaker in a young lady named Amelia Earhart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a picture showing the, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was taken at, this, at the armory of Amelia Earhart and several community leaders of one type or other, and one very prominent person in the mm -hmm. in the picture is Fanny Still. Mm -hmm. Of course, she also in during World War II she was very active yes. in uh, various kinds of you know Red Cross activities and so forth. And she also coordinated uh, some of the big scrap drives that they had here when you know everybody was. Uh, Donating their aluminum pans and their old radiators and so forth and so rubber. on. Rubber. And rubber and so forth for the uh, – and we have, again, a couple of pictures of her supervising some guys loading things into trucks and so mm -hmm. forth. The, the, uh, the museum has an incredible uh, photographic archive. I think we currently have something like 15,000 – photographs that are cataloged that we could actually pull up on the computer and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah, that doesn't even include all the ones that aren't cataloged <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, and I hesitate to think of how many there might still be out there because we keep getting them too. People, Yeah, they keep bringing them in. And say, yeah. oh, I found this in Grandpa's trunk when we, you know, cleared the attic out. Yeah. And we keep finding uh, photo albums of the smalls. Oh, yeah. They were, um, when they're tucked away in the little cardboard edges on the uh, all four edges, mm -hmm. and really, really old scrapbooks. So he's taking them apart and cataloging each photograph. Now, is is that because obviously where the museum stands, that was their property? Did they just donate a bunch of their photographs, or oh, yeah, was that left behind? Or donated a whole lot more than yeah. photographs. Yeah, a lot of our collection, which is actually going to be our next exhibit. Okay. We'll be in the Centennial Room. We'll be on the small family. And we're actually, we're going through the archival and the artifacts now to decide what. What should use. be out there, yeah. There's just mm -hmm. so much um, to use mm -hmm. to tell the story. That might have to be our next episode. I want to add one. The, the small family, yes. yeah. In fact, Jerry, do you remember what was it, two years ago? We got a very large collection of material photographs and documents and so forth from uh, one of the uh, the small descendants who lives currently out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how many pictures and how many letters and so forth mm -hmm. they have, but it was a, a tremendous addition to our collection. Yes, very okay. exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is exciting. A friend of ours uh, is friends of hers and then goes to visit and then it brings back oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. the, the donated material and then we go through it all and catalog it all and yeah, everything. Which takes time. So. Yeah, and it included, for example, a lot of photographs uh, from uh, Governor Small's trial in 1921 mm -hmm. up in Waukegan, mm -hmm. photos from the courtroom and so forth, and then also mm -hmm. uh, coverage of, as you probably remember from reading in history, that uh, the governor's wife, Ida, died the day he was acquitted. And uh, so uh, they had just gotten back to Kankakee and he was greeting all his friends and so forth. And she uh, died that evening. And so they had a lot of pictures showing the, the funeral and the burial site and that sort of thing. So that was a part of that material we got from late in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the things that happened... When mm -hmm. something big is going on. So That's we're going to include the good and the bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's hard to not talk about one. Right. And then, and then Fanny will definitely be included. In the small. Mm -hmm. I found exhibit. a great photograph when we were going through of her with one of the young children on the farm. And uh, it was a wonderful picture. So she will be definitely included uh, in this exhibit. Okay. And she just provided a, a great help to um, the family and to the museum. So, yeah. Who's next on the, the docket of, of women in our uh, county's history? I'll leave that too. Next <laughs> oh, is yeah. Eva Minor. 
Okay. Uh, Eva Miner has a very strong distinction. Uh, she was the first attorney to practice, a woman attorney, to practice in Kankakee County. Uh, and later even was the first woman to ever be the president of the Kankakee Bar Association. Uh, she's a native of Kankakee. She was born here in uh, 1898 and uh, graduated from Kankakee High School in 1916. So she had touches on everything local here. Uh, after she graduated from high school, as often was the case, I think, at that time, she became a teacher right out of high school, uh, and a lot of people did at that time. She taught for two years, but— Especially women. Yes, became very true. teachers at Although that time. Although Len Small was a school teacher for oh, really? about a year or two, very early in his career. Okay. Uh, but anyway, yes, primarily women. Uh, anyway, she decided after two years that she was not fitted to be a teacher, so she went back to school. She went to the Gallagher Business School in Kankakee, which uh, was quite a local institution. We'll touch on that a bit later. Yeah, I think we talked about that, I feel like, just a little bit on another episode that we recorded. I, we I can't remember which one, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, where was Because the Gallagher School was, where uh, was on that? On Indiana Avenue. The building is still there, about midway down the block across from the courthouse. Uh, it's now owned by the Journal. Okay. Uh, but anyway, she went to Gallagher Business School and started taking a you know secretarial uh, business type course, and in many cases, uh, students at Gallagher would be sent out to take part time jobs to help support themselves and so forth. And so, she got assigned to uh, a part time job and supposedly fairly temporary with. Uh, one of the local attorneys, William Hunter, who was quite a well-known attorney at the time. And uh, that was, I think, uh, 1918, probably. Uh, the temporary job was supposed to last for just about three or four months. But uh, when she finished that term, uh, Hunter asked her to just stay on because he liked the work she was doing. She was doing basically secretarial work. Uh, and continued doing that, working in the office and helping as an assistant and so forth until um, about 1920 when uh, Mr. Hunter said, I think you should be consider becoming a lawyer. You should study law. And uh, she said, I guess she said immediately, oh, that sounded like a good idea. It was something new for her. But – at that time, was it allowed? Yes, but at that time, the primary means. I mean, today you have to graduate from law school. Yes, <laughs> or yes. generally have to. But at that time, you could uh, essentially apprentice yourself to a lawyer. You worked in a lawyer's office, studying the law for several years or so forth, and then eventually take the bar exam. And that was uh, that way with. Almost every, a, yeah. lot, a lot of different There's jobs, a young right? Named Abraham Lincoln that did it that way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He, he did the same sort of thing. I would imagine you would, it, it just kind of like if you were going to do a black, if you're going to be a blacksmith, right? You right. apprentice with apprentice a, to a blacksmith. A blacksmith. Yeah. So actually, she. Uh, Although those are two very different things. It just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, she then uh, passed the bar exam in 1924. And there's a. Uh, I can only imagine at that time how hard that would have been for a woman, because yes. yeah. it was. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. What was it? Night. Nineteen twenty-four. What was the year that women were allowed oh. to vote? Was that nineteen nineteen? Uh, nineteen eighteen, nineteen nineteen, somewhere right after the first world yeah, war. Yeah. So I mean, it really wasn't that long. No, it wasn't that women just got the right to finally vote. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I imagine. Becoming a female attorney in the mm -hmm. 20s wasn't easy. It was yeah. not easy. Uh, it probably is not easy even today. But <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the newspaper uh, took note of the fact that she had become past her bar exam. And in, in fact, it said, uh, Miss Eva L. Minor of Kankakee, Illinois, has been admitted to the Illinois State Bar, the only woman among 185 examined. She passed all of her exams with high honors, while 101 men failed. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Miner's success is also exceptional because she did not attend college, studying law with them while employed with an attorney, 
its office for the past five years. Mm-hmm. She really so, showed them. She did, indeed. <laughs> Man. Uh, she was also, uh, you know, actually, she became a law partner of, of Mr. Hunter from 1924 until 1933 when he ceased practicing because he had been elected a circuit judge. Okay. So then she set up her own her own law. Office. Now at that time, were they specializing in different types of law, or was it pretty general? I at think that time? it was I fairly mean, general. He, uh, d- and for just, her career, do you know, uh, like, what type of law was she doing? Uh, I think she was a general. She was a trial lawyer. Uh, okay. That's one of the big distinctions: people who actually do trial work and those who do primarily research work. Uh, and Hunter was a trial lawyer. Uh, and she learned a huge amount from him. I think she uh, had. Uh, she said she went to court with him every day when she was studying law. So she just absorbed all of the skills needed to become a very effective trial lawyer. So she set up her own firm in the arcade building where she had gone to school at uh, the Gallagher School of Business, which was at that time in the. Arcade, well, in the earlier days, was in the arcade building. Anyway, Eva kept her law office until she retired in the mid-1980s. And uh, she tried many cases, not only locally and some fairly good landmark cases, uh, both criminal and civil law. But uh, she also uh, did quite a few cases in the state appellate and the state supreme courts. So she was uh, a fairly prominent lawyer, in addition to being prominent because she was the first uh, female lawyer yeah. in, the, in this county, but also because of her work. She worked with, uh, I know it, at one point, uh, there was, sometimes she was co-counsel with uh, a young lawyer named Sam Shapiro, who went on to become governor of the state. Well, also. There you go. That's a big one. No, uh, Do you know <laughs> what some of like her well-known cases were that she won? Do you have any of, of that? I don't have that offhand. And uh-huh. I know that, you know, I would, in doing research on various things, occasionally I'd run across a, a story that mentioned that she was the attorney in, in a yes. given case, but I don't really have any of that at the but top. But going to the 1980s, she must have been up there. She was. She was... <laughs> um, I mean, 89 years old when she died. (laughs) Wow. She died in 1988. Uh, In between, though, in addition to uh, being, you know, an active attorney, she was, and I mentioned she was president of the County Bar Association, first woman to become so. But she was also a founding member of, of something I mentioned before, the Business and Professional Women. As an interesting connection, that particular organization, uh, all three of the women we're talking about today were very active members in that group. Uh, mm-hmm. The third one being Mary Gallagher, which we'll get to in a few moments. Okay. Yeah. But um, she also was, uh, Eva Minor was also active in the Women's Service Club called Zanta, which I think is still like active in town. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, and uh, St. Mary's Hospital Auxiliary, the Community Chest, and the Chamber of Commerce. So she was active in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And she was also. Uh, member of our historical society. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> in the yeah. 1970s, when we were raising funds to build a new gallery, in fact, it's the big gallery that we call the, the Kanki History Gallery or the, the Kanki Story Gallery that's on the north end of the building, or south end of the building, I'm sorry. Uh, she was the chair of the fundraising group called 100 for History. And it was very successful. Uh, I remember that well because I was, I say, I was president of the uh, historical society at the time we built that particular uh, okay. gallery. So it, it was uh, very close to my mind. So you remember you remember her? Uh, yeah, I remember dealing with her from time to time because mm-hmm. uh, she was, you know, obviously heading up the fundraising and yeah, but. Uh, as I mentioned, she died in, in 1988 at the age of 89, and uh, her funeral was at St. Pat's, St. Patrick's in Kanki, where she had been a member all her life. And uh, she's buried, I believe, in, in Mount Grove. Okay. So, anyway. Wow, that, that's Eva incredible. Eva was a very interesting person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to become uh, one of the—I mean, I don't know if she was the— First female attorney in 
in Kankakee County. Oh, yes. She was the, she was definitely absolute, first, she was absolutely oh, yeah, the, she first. Was the first first woman to win a law license in Kankakee County. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, so she was very very prominent lady. <laughs> yeah, she was very successful. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's see. So next is you said Mary, Mary Gallagher. Mary Gallagher. Who, um, so the, she started Gallagher, the Gallagher School, Gallagher of, School of Business. Well, uh, yes, yeah, she did eventually. Did you want to take? Start? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit. She actually bought the school. It was originally Brown Business School, and after a while, she said uh, she worked at a, a different business school in a different area but eventually she said well i want to buy this school and then she she did and then she renamed it gallagher business school and going through her file i found different brochures on the different classes you could take uh you can stay you can study different combinations like bookkeeping arithmetic penmanship as one arithmetic penmanship and spelling bookkeeping, typewriting, shorthand typewriting, spelling, shorthand typewriting, or special comptometer courses. Oh, yeah. A comptometer is something that was... My my mother actually was a comptometer operator in Chicago, but that's the only reason why I know that how that is. A, a comptometer? Comptometer. It was a sort of a super adding machine. Okay. Okay. I think I've seen one of those. Yeah. It had you know lots of keys and yeah. so forth. But... Uh, I'm sorry, Joy. I didn't oh, mean to no, interrupt you, fine. but I was just, I'm glad just you, thinking. I remember. Where, I didn't. I botched that. Were there, were there yeah. been like, um, like court reporter or, or recorder? Excuse me, not reporter, recorder. Probably right? this for sure is specifically for night schools. So oh, okay. they do have day school um, business courses as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Um, and she did did have court reporting classes, which and those are a bit later. I think toward the you know, nineteen forties and and later, rather yeah. than at the earlier part of it. She she was uh, the the owner. She was a teacher, taught classes. She was the manager. She was very involved in the school. She really wanted not only women but men to have um, business courses available to them at a price they can afford, so that they can get. A variety of different types of jobs. Because this is before period. Kankakee Community College, obviously, yeah. oh, yes. right? Mm-hmm. What, what uh, what's the time frame we're talking? Uh, nineteen. Well, she actually came to Kankakee in nineteen thirteen as the uh, in, to be in charge of the Browns Business College location here. Browns Business College was a chain. They had twenty some schools around the Midwest. Uh, she had taught previously at Rockford in mm-hmm. their schools there, and then she also later managed four of their central Illinois schools. Mm-hmm. But uh, she and she came to Kankakee uh, in, I say, 1913, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, at at the age of 29. And next year, she bought bought out the Brown School with an interesting condition uh, to the to sale. She had to retain the Browns Business College name for five years. Hmm. Uh, That's a long time. Yeah, and she said, "Yeah, okay, we could do that." And hmm. so, so she did. She went along with. What would the, the What would the advantage be for for that for for Brown? I, I don't know. It must have may have been uh, just a. Uh, because they had a whole chain of schools and the name recognition, probably. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. There was no no statement in any of the research material that I saw. And I don't know if that why that was set yeah, up. But that it must have been something condition. along those lines. Would would so. still help get their name out there, out there oh, for yeah. the other branches or whatever, or I the other so. locations. Yeah, because uh, it could be, as a, I, I know they had one in, in Cairo, Illinois, even, because I ran across, mentioned mm-hmm. something else in Cairo, Brockford and mm-hmm. Peoria and, and this sort of thing. So um, they were well mapped out, it sounds oh, yeah. like, mm-hmm. north and south and the middle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. But an interesting quote from the, the Kanki Daily Journal and its portrait gallery, which they ran in the uh, – 50s, 60s, and so forth. They did a, a. They featured Mary Gallagher, and one of the notes said, "Back in 1914, it took a tremendous amount of courage on the part of Miss Gallagher 
the teacher, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Miss Gallagher, the teacher, to venture into the ownership and management of a business college. No other woman in Illinois had ever attempted it, had attempted it but Miss Gallagher felt she had the ability to operate her own school. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is 1913 and 1914, which is a long way back. Uh, once, once again, uh, before women were even allowed to vote. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she did start running the school. And we have some interesting pictures. Again, I always come back to pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. Pictures of uh, mostly when – most of these I think were when it was Browns, but it was about the same era that she was coming and take over. Pictures inside the arcade building, these rather large rooms with – 50 or 60 young women with typewriters, uh, manual typewriters. <laughs> yes, the ones that are hard to, uh, oh, yes. to push down. Yeah. Uh, as Jory mentioned, she was a tireless promoter. She really mm -hmm. promoted the school. Uh, a number of other interesting ways that she did that. She advertised in the local newspapers, of course. Not only the, the local in, Kank in Kankakee, but the in country the weeklies and uh, yeah. some of the other surrounding counties and so forth. Uh she also did what I guess you could say were success story brochures. They were brochures that told the story of one or, or five or six graduates yeah. of there yes. and how they succeeded. Yep. Yeah, Jory has an example right there yeah. that she's looking at. There is a reason for this graduate's enthusiasm in comparing a Gallagher training to Lindbergh's transatlantic flight. A whole story about that. Different wow. people. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> she, <coughs> excuse me. Are there any, and I'm sure there are, there has to be other probably prominent men and women in our county's history that went to Gallagher? Uh, one that I Maybe. know was Sam Shapiro. <laughs> he went to Gallagher. Oh, yeah. And quite a few, there were a lot, a lot of young men that uh, graduated from because at that time there was no community college system. Yes. And the, well, there was St. Viator's in Bourbonnais, but there were otherwise not very many places you could go for a higher education. And they also, it was much more expensive. Yes. The business mm -hmm. colleges filled a an interesting gap. Most mm -hmm. communities the size of Kankakee in the pre World War II one years had something like Brown's Business School or Gallagher's Business College because that was the place to, to go. I think that she said uh, – I'm trying to think. I had seen something here. Oh, yes. Uh, one of, this is in a, uh, a letter. She did, wrote personal letters mm -hmm. to high school graduates uh, – she apparently would get the graduation list and would write them a letter saying, you know, you really ought to consider coming to school here. Wow. Uh, in one of the letters, she said, uh, for example, uh, When it comes to car maintenance and repairs, I trust All Automotive and Kankakee Mantino Moments or Piatone. And right now is the perfect time to get new brakes. With All Automotive's Brake Savings event, you can receive $50 in rebates. First, a $25 Visa gift card from the supplier when you do their mail-in rebate, plus an additional $25 rebate from All Automotive on any service from March 1st through December 31st. Now, with gas prices continuing to go up and there's no end in sight on when they're going to come back down, I'm sure you can use all the savings you possibly can when it comes to car maintenance. All Automotive's Brake Savings event is going on right now. Receive that $50 in rebates today. For coupons locations, you can visit allautomotiveinc.net. That's allautomotiveinc.net. The young people who are making good today are those who are trained for their work. Suppose it does take from 9 to 12 months to complete a course. At your age, that's a very short time, and you'll be investing time, money, and effort in capital that will pay you dividends the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, she knew how to yeah, have another, in. 
I have another paragraph from what, another one of our letters. The second-rate doctor, dentist, lawyer, advertising man, or preacher never gets beyond a second-rate income and never enjoys more than a second-rate reputation. You can't afford to be a second Raider, when you are ready to come to school, come with the idea of finishing your course and finishing it right. Yeah, I th- that's that's incredible that she would take that time to to, to individually write to these people or to these gra- high school graduates. Now, what happened to? Uh, so, how long did the Gallagher School go on for? It went on till uh, beyond her retirement. Uh, let's see, until 1951. Okay, but interestingly, she uh, things you don't think would be part of a business college or business school. They had a basketball team. Mm-hmm. They did, for example. Wow! See, I wouldn't I have had guessed a research that. And they had proms. On that one time. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had proms. They had dances, and they had other social activities as well. Okay, so they yeah. they kind of put in some of the typical extracurricular yeah. college or, or, experience. Or, things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I did have a request on the basketball team. If we had any information on her basketball team, I did have a little bit, uh, a little bit on that, like but. some. Sp- Game scores or mm-hmm. something like that, and who they play. Yeah, I was going to say it would have been what their schedule was. It would have been other business schools in the region, that right? And, or that and uh, business sponsored teams. Oh, you know, okay. amateur uh, basketball teams, things like that, sponsored by you know Fred's Plumbing and Heating or something <laughs> like that. But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> they also. Um, Thought escaped me, whatever it was I was going to say. Anyway, we talked about you know how long the school was in business. So the classes at the arcade building uh, were held from 1914 when she bought the school till 1925 when she realized that they were really successful. They needed more room mm-hmm. and they needed a modern and larger classroom spaces and so mm-hmm. forth. So she decided that she would go ahead and build her own school building. Yep. And uh, she built this two-story brick building on oh, yep. about halfway down the east or the west side of, of Indiana Avenue. Uh, actually, the address is 158 South Indiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the newspaper located uh, said that the location, reporting mm-hmm. opening of the school, said the location was pretty good because many of the offices in the surrounding blocks of downtown Kankakee were the people who were hiring Gallagher graduates. Mm-hmm. So the Gallagher building that, uh, you know, that Mary built for the I, Gallagher uh, school that's owned by the journal currently I, did. Did was that ever a, a a print shop for the journal? Oh no, it was always just used for storage. They never yeah, no, had any yeah, no, printing they, done there. No, they they bought it after the business school after the business school went out of business, uh, and it just used for storage okay, so, old files. And so in nineteen fifty one, no mm-hmm. one like bought the business. Right. It just yeah, it, was it became just available, and the journal bought it. Apparently. Okay. Coming back to Ms. Mrs. Gallagher, or Ms. <laughs> yes, Gallagher, excuse Ms. me, Gallagher. she never married. Okay. One estimate, and I'm not sure where this estimate came from, but it was out of a, a newspaper story of some sort, I think, that in the 34 years that she operated the school, they had some 10,000 students who had enrolled for at least one course there. So it has a pretty big impact on the community. Yeah. Now, why? how come it didn't get sold that by 1951 was there— a, uh, more uh, was the the business school thing kind of played out, or <clears throat> or was it just more or less? Uh, was it other reasons? Just, I don't know. I think society changed, um, and I think that yes, maybe the market was not the same. I never saw any. There were actually additional business schools later on in. There was a temp for a short time after fifty one. I think it was. Two or three years, there was a business school that I think operated under the name of of Gallagher or maybe just Kanky Business School. I'm not sure. Uh, located on Merchant Street somewhere in the area where 
Uh, this has all been torn down now. I'm yeah, because I want to say I, I could be wrong. I I I think my grandma Lamore. I want to say she attended a business school sometime in the 1950s. It was Mary Crest. I was, might have been, I was just going to say that might have been Mary Crest Business College. See, which we think alike. We just, <laughs> yeah, you do. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romy Hammis set up the, the Mary Crest Business College and actually built a, a kind of a colonial style building on uh, the next street, uh, uh, north of Court Street in the Mary Crest subdivision. That's now, I think, the Kanky Housing Authority offices. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's kind of okay. colonial style building. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and that lasted for a number of years, but then eventually faded out. I think probably when the community college idea came in, mm-hmm. which would have been the 1960s, early 1960s, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 63 or 64. I don't remember precisely, but well, I was working for the journal at the time because I remember covering college board meetings before they actually had a school yeah. <laughs> when they were still planning it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, And then all of that, of course, had – Business classes. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, yes, right. Mm-hmm. Olivet um, was a good school yes. uh, to, to go to um, a four-year school, but perhaps uh, people by that time, you know, maybe wanted to go a little bit yeah. more in-depth with their studies, and Olivet would have been uh, an option for yeah. them. Or, of course, to go to a, a four-year a state, school elsewhere. Yeah, state state school. Or something. yeah I was going to say U of I or um, uh, no, it's Eastern. Or, or, yeah, Easter, or yeah, yeah those, Southern, right. Eastern, all of those, yeah. Right. Or some of the mm-hmm. private colleges. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, the, the Mary Gallagher had an incredible placement rate for her graduates, uh, almost 100%, at least through those. That is impressive. Uh even during the Depression for years, for example, uh, in 1930s, there was a newspaper story at some point that noted that every graduate found a, quote, responsible job during that period of time. Uh, she also got really involved. She got involved personally at times, not not everybody, but frequently she would actually go to a job interview with the candidate from with one of her graduates as moral support or to back them up or whatever. And of course, if it was one of the downtown businesses, she knew all those people. Anyways. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. But she finally retired in 1947 uh, and the uh, school continued operations until January 1, 1951, as I mentioned. Uh, do you think of anything else that we want to say about Gallagher, Mary, uh, Mary Gallagher? Or? She was uh, definitely a great presence in Kankakee. She was a prominent, uh, respected businesswoman. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems that her um, her ability to to show that a woman can be a, an owner of a business and can run a business and can manage it and teach yes and uh, write to students and do all these these other things and she was respected um, for that and it really shows that um, you know women have done now not every woman I would say, um, had the same outcome as these yeah, women did. Yeah, but she did. she inspired other mm-hmm. women in the area. Um, yeah, to... these three women just happened to to be really uh, successful. Um, but she seems to have been a very um, prominent person in the business world mm-hmm. in Kankakee. Now that's when Kankakee. I was going to say. I mean, downtown they're... was. Yeah, there and there busy. could be so many other women that were inspired by. Um, mm-hmm. uh, any of the uh, any of the three women we talked about today, they moved outside the area. They became successful somewhere else, and we mm-hmm. just don't know about it. Right? Exactly, yes. Right. You know. Now downtown Kankakee has changed dramatically since these days, um, where everything was connected and, and everything was downtown. Now you have law offices spread out uh, and there's not the concentration of people downtown 
who work downtown and businesses downtown, like there was, you know, back in the day. Well, up through the 50s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, everyone's spread out mm-hmm. throughout the, the metro area yeah. now. Yes. And they'll, you'll have uh, office law offices in uh, a more of a residential kind of setting, not a business office yes. kind of a setting. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah, I can think of one lawyer's office that I know of that's over on uh, Kennedy Drive in the house. Yes, uh, the one where uh, um, Chris Boland's office. Yes, Boland, Boland Barman. That's yes, I was just going to say Barman's uh, <laughs> yes. office. It's where uh, what was the travel? Um, Oh, agency. Yes. Why am I forgetting the name of the travel I, agency? Yeah. I, I can picture my but family I can't used to use that travel <laughs> agency all the time. I don't know why it's escaping me, but regardless, yeah. yeah. So you know, and every yeah, yeah everyone was previously was downtown was in the, the I think we in the could PNC do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> That's right. How downtown has changed. Yeah, yeah easily. Through the oh years. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was very Definitely. interesting though that the three women we discussed today were in really disparate fields. You know, they they had interesting experience. I mean, you had an educator, an attorney, and a historian. Slash nurse. Slash nurse, (laughs) slash business person in the the farming field. Right, kind of multifaceted, yeah. And they, they all were very active in social Areas in the community, organizations, yeah. and so forth, because they contributed on beyond their uh, particular area of expertise. Yes, you'll find that prominent people in the community were very active back in the day. They were active in uh, uh, they were on this board and that board and in this committee to raise money for mm-hmm. something or another. You'll find. When I do research, I find a lot of names that they're they're, they're, they're attached everywhere. to so many things. Yeah, and I think uh, you'll find that active. today too, because I know uh, the more I've gotten to go out and about uh, to different community events or or um, organizations that are trying to uh, build something new in the area, whether it's something physical mm-hmm. or it's just a program of some kind, it's like. Wow, uh, that guy's there, and he's also there and there and there. And there <laughs> yeah. I'm just seeing him in, in all and, these different places. You and know? she is there and there and there. And yeah, there. right. She, right. I was going to say we should talk about she. Him. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's great to to see the the repetition of someone is so dedicated, mm-hmm. you know, and and multiple things in the area. So. Something interesting, and, and this was—I don't have a specific number, but I remember seeing something in a, a news story not too long ago. Is that today the number of women attending college in the United States has now greatly exceeded the number of men? Yes, yes. I think I remember reading or hearing that somewhere too. Yes, absolutely. So. Mm-hmm. There you go. The women got the power. I think so. (laughs) (laughs) They got the brains. Um, And uh, if anyone says otherwise, well, shame on you. (laughs) So, um, well, this uh, Jack uh, Clacy, Jory Walters from the Kankakee County Museum, thank you both so much once again uh, for coming by and uh, shining a a spotlight on some of the prominent women in, in our county's history. Um, and I'm sure, and as you mentioned, I know, uh, especially Fanny, you can uh, learn more about her at the museum for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure so much if, if, uh, Gallagher and, um, I mean, it's escaping <laughs> me already. Even minor. Even minor. minor yes. Thank you. Um, I have pieces at the exhibit or at the museum, but do they? I don't know. Mary Gallagher, I think there's mention of, of the Gallagher Business School. Yeah, we have some books some, some in ex- a research yeah. oh, okay. area. In terms of exhibits, I don't think that there. either uh, either the other two are a part of the exhibit in the same way that Fanny was. Yeah. But, uh, um, but, but we have a lot of information on all Absolutely. And, and many and, more. And we just want to encourage um, anyone to – Go to the Kankakee County Museum uh, any day you choose that the museum is open and see it if you haven't. Mm -hmm. And also the French Heritage Museum as well. Um, Plenty there as uh, as well. Um, And then uh, on 
for as far as both of your parts in the museum, as, as far as research goes, as someone is trying to learn mm-hmm. something, mm-hmm. Um, they can reach out to you. Oh, absolutely. That's right. Yeah. We are open uh, Tuesdays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Saturdays we're open 1 to 4. And we're part-time. But you can call between those hours and we'll, we'll get the message. Yeah. Message yeah. too is that the the French Heritage Museum at the moment is closed. We open seasonally. That's right. Uh, I forgot about that. Thank you for mentioning April that. April first or May? I can't recall. I think April. I think it's yeah. April through, sure. August, through November. Yeah. Then we shut down for the winter months because yes. no, yeah. <laughs> don't get as right. much traffic. We don't get yeah. much traffic at all. We get an incredible amount of traffic from out of state and out of town at the mm-hmm. French Heritage Museum because of the genealogical connection. Yeah, and I always love hearing that. It's so cool to hear the stories um, of all these people from around the world are going to the French Heritage Museum right. in in Little Kankakee, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and mm-hmm. and uh, they came all this way just to go to the museum, and um, it's it's always cool to hear. I that. have people come from different states to to come and do research for a lot of times for genealogy oh, yeah. yeah or professors sometimes oh sure oh yeah um one professor i remember came from california one of the universities and i had very little of information on the particular person it was a woman but I didn't have that much. I said, you're absolutely welcome to come. I just don't have that much. And she did. And she also went to the library you know, research. Of course. But she came and I said, I have it all for you. I just don't have a lot of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, she was glad to come and do research at the library as well. Yeah, that's so cool. Library. Right. The, the, the Kankakee Public Library has a, has a whole uh, genealogy mm-hmm. department. Yes. So... Uh, it's duly noted. Um, also, uh, another institution in the area is uh, the uh, Bourbonnet Grove Historical Society, which mm-hmm. has a lot of information on the early settlers uh-huh. of Bourbonnet and so forth, the French Canadian, yes. French heritage, and of course, are in the beginning stages right now of uh, recreating the old log schoolhouse that was probably the oldest building in Bourbonnais. Yeah, which is super exciting mm-hmm. for oh, yes. that mm-hmm. they're finally going to be able to put that together. So yeah, we uh, have a lot of interaction with our, our sister organization there. I would yes. imagine. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, Bourbonnais was settled before uh, Kankakee. Oh, yes, so, about 20 years. Long before. Yes, yes. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I would imagine there's there's a lot of interaction there. So that's good to know. Yes. And, of course, mention, too, um, if you haven't checked out Jack Clacy's weekly column in the Daily Journal, make sure you do that as well. Thank you, so, sir. <laughs> and uh, you can find <clears throat> um, your books for sale as well yes. in the, uh, the uh, museum, museum store, store mm-hmm. there that's as right. well. So, um, yes. And, Jory, don't you have – you have some books there, right? No, not me. Not you. No, For I'm, some reason, I thought you had at least I'm, a couple. No, I'm no. trying to work on one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jack is much better at that. <laughs> he does. I do the research. I'm not that good at the writing, although that's what I would like to improve upon. Um, but yeah, I would like to finish one one of these days mm-hmm. and then yeah, talk about it. But uh, uh, she's been um, working on for a number of years, Abe. What would be essentially a walking tour of downtown Kankakee? Okay, put all the buildings good. back. <laughs> okay, yes. the ones that the aren't book, there anymore. The ones aren't there, and then, um, or in the case of the arcade building, put it back the way it was originally was <laughs> the Gothic. <laughs> yes, right. look. So to bring um, buildings back, so that when you walk, or if you're sitting in your chair and you're you're your house you can just look at these buildings and and say what was there at what time different periods so maybe the same um photograph from the same angle but at different periods to show you the progression of uh, a particular block that would be so cool to see i would love that <laughs> so i'm yeah. Okay. Getting there. So All right. That'll be a future awesome. possibility oh, sure. to talk about. Yeah, but I love time. to talk about downtown and how it has changed. Yes. How it and was, I, how, it, how it is. And most uh, 
residents that have resided here for a long time also love talking about it. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I remember, I believe I was a, on the East Coast when um, Southeast Avenue, half of it ceased to become an avenue. Yes. Uh, when it was all redone. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I came back from the East Coast. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't recognize what they it. Done to my hometown. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yes, to my hometown. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they uh, change. As we, I think Jack and I talked about um, one more recent episode. How the uh, East Avenue and or Southeast Avenue, West Avenue, those were the mm-hmm. that was the hub. That, that those, was that was the was, business, was the main business, it, yeah. right? Originally. Right along, right along the railroad That's tracks, right. mm-hmm. and then it migrated. Migrated to court and then down yep. to Skyler. Yep. No. And then, and then out of yeah, town. And then out of town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, so. the saying, I guess, in real estate, location, location, location. Yeah. Well, I asked Southeast Avenue was the location. Yes. And then it became another street and then another street mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. It's also good to see the downtown coming back to life again. Yes, it, it is. is. There's a lot it's happening wonderful. there, and I think more is going to happen in the near future. Absolutely. And yeah. I say the only building in downtown that has been continuously um, active – since 1853 has been the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, it's, yeah. Right. That's very, very Although true. Although we're now in the third version of the building. The third version, yeah. Yes. 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 But it's still, yeah, that's the the lo- longest oh, yes. active. Mm-hmm. There is actually the property deed for the courthouse block, mm-hmm. which was given to the county by uh, the, de- well, uh, the developer of the, of the town. Was had a condition saying that the that block of land should be kept forever free of buildings except for a courthouse. Yes, <laughs> yep. So and that's why they have that whole block right. there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you once again. I feel like we could just go on forever about all kinds of different things, but um, it oh, just yeah. makes me excited for the next time. So, yes. Um, well, I love doing this once a month with you both. Yes, Is there anything you else you want to add well, before we I think go? I'm pretty, we're pretty well caught up, unless Jory has something. We would yeah, say no, we enjoy just, certainly meeting with you. Uh, yes, <laughs> doing this for an hour and getting information to the public. And if anyone in the public wants to contact us, feel free to to do so and we'll be happy to respond to any questions okay comments. and yeah a great place to always start too uh is going to kankakeecountymuseum.com yes so that's a great place to get your feet wet and then go on from there or better yet just walk into the museum so yes. we always enjoy visitors exactly yes. yeah all right well thank you again to you both yes thank you thank you jake Well, that concludes this episode of Kankakee Podcast. I'm Jake Lamore. Thank you so much for listening. Please share this podcast with a family member, friend, or neighbor that you think might enjoy learning new things about the people and places of Kankakee County. The more we share this podcast with new people, the more we're going to grow. And also, a special thank you to our patrons for helping make this episode possible, including Jake Lee, Jesse Arsenal, Dave Barron, Daryl Damper, Samantha Rocknowski, Lake Iverson, Jake Vaughn, Travis Garcia, Jane Bostwick, Don Harrison, Simon Topless, Scott Wright, Carrie O'Connell, Jamie Race, Eric Olson, Jeff and Rosa Carroll, Teague Dreenan, Sandy and Steve Twait, and Rose Lucky. Now, to become a podcast patron, go to kankakeepodcast.com and click on the patron tab. Now, if you pledge $5 or more per month, you'll also hear your name announced on every episode. Now, there's also other rewards like early access to episodes, commercial free episodes, podcast merch, discounts on podcast events, uh, you and I grabbing coffee and heading to the Kankakee County Museum together, and and so many other cool rewards. Now, our monthly pledge currently is, uh, our, our, our goal, I should say, our monthly goal right now is $400 per month. And this just helps cover the costs of the podcast. But also, I'm trying to launch a new YouTube series called Kankakee Podcast Out and About, where not only do you get to hear 
about the people and places of Kankakee County, but you get to see some of these places, actually see inside some of these cool places in Kankakee County. So that would be the whole point of this YouTube series that we would do once a month. So please sign up for our patron program today. Even if it's just $1 a month, it really does go a long way. You can do that at kankakeepodcast.com. Our theme song is by Lupe Carroll, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.